Welcome to BioVivacious. BioVivacious is a YouTube channel dedicated to clear fundamental concepts of biosciences and to make the subject interesting and vibrant. My name is Sebastian. Today we are going to discuss about protein domains. When you look at a protein, a, a, prote a domain is a functional unit of a protein. It is a functional unit. There are proteins uh, with single domain. There can be protein with the multi domains. But each of these domains will have a particular function to perform. Some domains can be of catalytic function. Some may be, you know, structural function. So that will be the function of a particular domain. What is interesting is this domain, uh, it is highly conserved in evolution. Now this domain can be shifted from one location to the next protein. Assume that, so here is a protein, okay, here is a protein and assume that this is a domain which has got a specific function. Let us say that this has the function of nucleotide binding. An example of a nucleotide binding uh, domain is the Rossmann fold. We have dealt with the Rossmann fold sometime earlier. So Rossmann fold is the function is to bind to the nucleotide. Now this particular domain which is responsible for binding to nucleotide can be shifted in the process of evolution to another protein. So therefore this nucleotide binding domain can be added to another protein. So another protein and here also it will carry out the function of binding to nucleotide. Look at several examples that you will see in the case of uh, uh, serine proteases. Classic examples where domain carrying out the same function. Now I, I know that you will immediately click with the, the concept of protein domains when we take the example of uh, uh, fatty acid synthase complex. If you look at the fatty acid synthase complex, it is a, a very large protein made up of uh, uh, several functional unit that has three domains. So which are the three domains? One is domain number one and that has a function and this domain has got three enzymes. If the function of this particular domain is allow the substrate molecule to come and to condense them. So therefore it is known as the substrate entry and condensation unit. Then you have a domain number two. The domain number two is made up of three enzymes and one protein. Like ACP is the protein. That also has a very specific function. If the function is reduction. Reduction of the substrate molecule. That is the function of domain number two. Then you have a domain number three and Domain number three, made up of only just one enzyme, that domain is known as the palmitate release unit. You see, different domains are carrying out very, very specific functions. And these domains are connected by lingers, connected by flexible region of a protein. And all of them will come together and will carry out the function of synthesizing fatty acid. You will now see examples of uh, domains operational in pyruvate dehydrogenase complex. In the second enzyme, which also has got three domains carrying out three different functions. You look at SRC proteins, that is, that also has got about four different domains. So therefore this session we are going to deal with these domains. And these domains, remember, these are maintained evolutionarily they are stable 
they they are uh, by and large they are not undergoing much mutation and this characteristics is continued from one generation or from one species to the next species that is the important aspect of it though we have seen that domains have a very specific function to perform there are domains that will carry out that will behave as moon lighting proteins you understand what is moon lighting moon lighting means so this protein will carry out one function in a particular location and it will carry out totally a different function elsewhere look at uh, hexokinase enzyme so this enzyme can carry out the function of converting glucose into glucose 6 phosphate in the cytoplasm but the same enzyme elsewhere in the neuron it can act as you know can act as neuroleukin so it will have a different function to carry out so the point is some of these enzymes some of these domains have more than one function they can also act as moon lighting proteins by a large a domain fold independently it is to carry out a particular function so therefore they will fold independently a domain can have various shapes as various size somewhere roughly about 7 kd kilo dalton to up to about 35 kilo dalton domains have been identified that is normally speaking now these domains are generally transferred uh, through a process known as exon shuffling exon shuffling this is a process which is used for transferring the domain especially in the eukaryotic system when it comes to a prokaryotic system it is through recombinations this is in prokaryotes and this is in eukaryotes that is how the domains are transferred across the species another important aspects of domain is if the function is additive you can keep on adding the functions and it will retain that function in the domain so this is an important aspect of protein domains now each domain will take a particular shape or it it will take a particular function now based on the shape and the functions domains can be classified into different fold so there are in in uh, uh, bioinformatics there are different ways of uh, classifying these domains one important classification is what we call it the catch classification the catch classification c stands for class a stands for architecture t stands for topology and h stands for homologous superfamily so this is one type of uh, uh, arrangement one type of architecture which is used to understand domains that is the catch arrangement class architecture topology and homologous superfamily there is a second category of ar arrangement of domain that is called yes scope that is called scope scope stands for structural classification of proteins let us just look at what exactly catch is representing so we will focus more on a uh, catch in the first one is the class so in the class what we are going to discuss is we are going to discuss about the uh, the structure of a protein and that will be especially in the secondary structure of a protein therefore in class you will find four different types in the first one first type is exclusively for alpha helices in the second category is exclusively for beta sheets 
in the third category you will find a mixture of alpha helices and beta sheets that's the third class and in the fourth one those portions that cannot be or those fold that cannot be classified into any of these category at all so these are the four different types of classes you will identify in the catch kind of uh, uh, structuring of the domains in the next level of organization uh, according to the catch classification is in the architecture that is the second level architecture means it is the general arrangement the general 3d arrangement of polypeptides in the alpha helical as well as in the beta sheets form that is the meaning of architecture there are several examples of architecture that falls into this category there are about 40 such classifications some classic examples are you know in the team battle that we have learned or in the uh, um, jelly rolls in the greek key It is solenoid. All these are examples of architecture. So similarly, you will see that in the hierarchy, it is coming lower and lower. So therefore, there are 40 different types of architectures identified. In the third category, in the classification according to catch is in the topology. What is the meaning of topology? Topology means protein fold all those folds similar folds are grouped together that is what is done in topology and this topology this particular fold will be retained in different species one classic example of a protein fold that topology is in the globin fold which we have learned globin fold we have seen that a globin fold which is made up of alpha helical structure that is a b c d e f g and h eight alpha helical structures forms the globin fold and you will find the same globin fold in myoglobin in hemoglobin in leg hemoglobin and in all of the hemoglobins in varieties of species the same fold is present so you see that from catch to architecture to topology how is the protein is maintaining a particular structure that is the meaning of topology and finally proteins with the same topology will again be divided into homologous superfamily that is the last category according to the catch classification so what happens in the homologous superfamily is they will have same structural as well as the functional property for example if you take even in the in the globin fold which we have seen the topology in the globin fold which is present in hemoglobin and myoglobin they will have a lot of similarity, structural similarity. Almost 35% of the amino acid is almost the same. Structural similarity also means functional similarity. That means they are supposed to bind to oxygen, nothing else. That will be the function. So this is maintained in the homologous superfamily. Let us compare with a very good example. That is colicin. Colicin is, uh, uh, it has the same topology like uh, in the globin fold, same topology. Colicin is used for disrupting the bacterial membrane. Disrupt bacterial membrane. See, we have seen it has got the same uh, fold like in the, in the globin fold. But in hemoglobin and myoglobin, the function is different, whereas this collision can disrupt the bacterial membrane. You see, same fold but carrying out two different functions. Therefore, these can be pulled under topology, 
but not under homologous superfamily. So this will give us a general idea about what exactly these domains are, how domains are classified. And classification of domain is very important, especially when we look at bioinformatic studies. These domains have been conserved through evolution, conserved through evolution, and then after that they will get diverged in the species. It may be slight variation that happens in one or two amino acids. It is literally like you know cutting and pasting, removing one amino acid, changing one amino acid. That brings in that brings in a different architecture, a different topology, maybe a different homologous superfamily into a different class. That gives variation. So this is a general understanding of protein domains. By and large, domains are tolerant to change, even in the hydrophobic core region. If at all there are changes happening in the domain region, those changes will be, uh, those changes in amino acid will continue to be there till it affects the functioning of that particular domain. There can be a decision after several years, several thousand years, whether this particular change which has occurred due to change in amino acid sequences must be retained or not. That will be decided by natural evolution process.